I want to give a special shout out to my patrons, to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Sworn, and Bibliomancers. Thank you so much for supporting my hobby and passion even more. It means a lot to me. Hi everyone, Patek here. Today's video will be a review for one of the most underrated books that I've read and it is The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. Yeah, this is Ken Liu's debut novel and it is super underrated. In my opinion, Ken Liu's reimagining of the birth of the Han Dynasty is nothing short of epic, complex, thrilling, and heartbreaking. Let's start with a bit of a background first. So this book, as some of you may know already, has been in my TBR pile for 5 years now. Looking back, I am always surprised by how fast time moves. I mean 5 years. So this series has received the same treatment as the Lycanius trilogy by James Islington did for me. I've read and loved the Lycanius trilogy by James Islington now. But what I meant by the same situation as the Lycanius trilogy, I wanted to read this series to its completion by reading them closer to each other. This way, I can retain all the necessary details and I have a better chance of actually having a better reading experience. It is why I keep on postponing reading this series for so long. Even though I knew I would end up loving this book anyway because I have really enjoyed reading The Paper Manager and Other Stories and also The Hidden Girl and Other Stories by Ken Liu. Since 2017, I I kept on thinking that the final book of the Dandelion Dynasty will be released the next year. That didn't happen. The final book of the series ended up getting delayed until the year, uh, this year, 2022. I have wanted to read this series for 5 years now. I kept on postponing it because I thought the final book will be released soon. And now I have read The Grace of Kings and I am pleased to say that The Grace of Kings is certainly worth the wait and worth the read. The Grace of Kings is the first book in the Dandelion Dynasty quartet by Ken Liu. I haven't read the rest of the series and things could change starting from The Wall of Storms, but it is not far-fetched to call The Grace of Kings a historical fiction or fantasy novel. My historical knowledge about the founding of the Han Dynasty or the Chu Han contention is rusty now, but there is no disputing that this novel is deeply inspired by it. Honestly though, it didn't dawn on me that Liu replicated the exact events of the Chu Han contention until I was near the end of the book. I went into this book as blind as possible and after I finished it, I did some research and Ken Liu admitted several times that The Grace of Kings is an epic fantasy reimagining of the founding of the Han Dynasty and the Chu Han contention, and I loved it so much. Spanning decades of story, The Grace of Kings is complex and epic in scope. It depicted brutal results inflicted by the clash of ideals. It displayed the cause and effect of love, friendship, loyalty, betrayals, war, and ambitions as raw as possible. And in the attainment of power, the more power you have, the more power corrupts and wields you. The main narrative in The Grace of Kings centers around two main characters, the Dandelion, Kunigaru, who is based on Liu Pang, and the Chrysanthemum, Mata Zindu, who is based on Xiang Yu. Kunigaru and Mata Zindu are best friends of polar opposites in both personality and ideals. While Kunigaru tends to govern with compassion and wit and intellect, Mata Zindu governs with honor and overwhelming might. I have seen several reviews accusing Ken Liu of plagiarism, and I have to disagree with this. If this is plagiarism, then every Trojan retelling or reimagining like the Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller is considered as plagiarism too. Ken Liu has repeatedly said in plenty of interviews that the Chu Han contention, I'm not sure for the rest of the series, is the main source for the grace of kings. It is the source material, and although several events were replicated, the characterizations, the detail, and the minimal fantasy elements implemented made the grace of kings its own epic or historical fantasy novel. Even though it is true that both Kunigaru and Mata Zindu are based on real-life historical figures, one thing differs so much from my experience of reading the actual historic textbook and The Grace of Kings. I enjoyed The Grace of Kings immensely. I felt incredibly invested with the characters. I was thrilled, I was scared, I was shocked for them. This is not a character-driven fantasy novel per se, but Ken Liu has successfully imbued emotions into these pages and sparked my attachment to the characters. I personally did not feel a thing reading about Liu Bang and Xiang Yu's story in a history textbook. It was an entirely different reading experience to read the feats of Kunigaru and Mata Zindu. These two are flawed characters trying their best to do what's right according to their ideals. Kunigaru seeks to innovate with compassion and forgiveness, and Mata Zindu insists on sticking to honor and tradition. And it was sad to see how circumstances constantly force them to act according to necessity than to do what's right according to them. Witnessing Kunigaru's character development from his carefree and rebellious beginning up to his position of leadership felt so rewarding. His friendship with Mata Zindu felt genuine, and the ebb and flow in their relationship caused by different philosophies of life never felt forced. On the other hand, the double pupil Mata Zindu with his weapons, Na Aroe Na and Gormo, inspires loyalty and awe with his insane strength. And it was not only the soldiers who felt awed by his prowess, I was too. And although I can understand the criticism regarding the lack of female characters, I also have to disagree with this because I think this is 
This seems to be a bit exaggerated. So, I mean, sure, if you are judging the grace of kings based on the first half of the novel, I can see the accuracy of this statement. But the second half of the grace of kings featured many pivotal female characters in a role that will actually decide the outcome of a war. Some of the conflicts in the second half of the novel seriously rely on women taking charge, whether they are generals or not. With Jia, Gin Masoti, Rizana, Soto, Mira, and Kikomi, Kenley has crafted strong and memorable female characters that don't rely on strengths and physical prowess. The criticism just seems unfair to me. If we're going to make comparisons, from the top of my mind, Sanderson Smith's Bond trilogy doesn't even have more than four female characters, four major female characters throughout the entire trilogy. And one of them is actually the main character, Vin. And this is coming from me who actually love Miss Bond trilogy so much. And I'm not criticizing Miss Bond trilogy for this, but I rarely or never see anyone criticize Miss Bond trilogy for the lack of female characters. But why do people criticize Ken Liu's Grace of Kings more heavily and loudly than Sanderson's Miss Bond trilogy when the Grace of Kings alone already has more memorable female characters than the entirety of the Miss Bond trilogy? And this is just one example, but whether that's fair or not, I will leave that for you to decide for yourself. I have mentioned the minimal fantastical elements of The Grace of Kings earlier. The story takes place in the fictional islands of Dara. The three dominating fantastical elements were the existence of airships, the meddling gods, and the creature Kruben. Kruben is a great one-horn scale whale of Dara and Sovereign of the Seas. It is 200 feet or 61 meters long, and its size is as large next to an elephant as an elephant would be next to a mouse. These aspects being added to the decades-long story and the shifting alliance caused by the continuous rise and fall of him made the narrative relentlessly compelling for me. The ruthless tactics employed and the flames of ambition by both humans and the gods ignited to win the conflicts will be judged by history and I look forward to judging The Grace of Kings and the rest of the series as one package. I do have some advice for those of you who are interested in reading The Grace of Kings for the first time. First, ignore the naysayers. Second, this is not a friendly novel for those who have just begun reading epic fantasy. It is super complex, there are many threats, characters, and names to remember. And lastly, be patient. Unlike many epic fantasy novels, Liu used a third-person omniscient narration rather than a third-person limited. I did struggle in some sections in the first half of the story. As I said, Kunigaru and Mata Zindu are the core of the plot in The Grace of Kings, but Ken Liu was bold enough to take the risk of introducing and focusing on many supporting characters in the first half of the novel. Sometimes it felt like reading a collection of connecting short stories as we relatively seldom get to see events unfolding from Kunigaru and Mata Zindu's perspective in the first half compared to the second half. However, the convergence and the payoff were utterly satisfying. The second half of The Grace of Kings was simply breathtaking and I found it difficult to put the book down. Overall, I think The Grace of Kings is one of the most underrated novels that I've read. It is underrated in every sense of the word. The novel has been published for 7 years now and it currently has a 3.7 average rating on Goodreads out of 14,000 ratings. It is unbelievably underrated and underhyped. I have a principle of second guessing reviews from reviewers I do not know and proven time and time again, this time by the grace of kings, I am glad that I stuck by this principle. I would have missed reading one of the best debut novels that I've read if I had listened to the negative reviews. This is why I always say, if a book interests you already, ignore the negative reviews, mine included, and just jump into it whenever you feel like you are in the right mood. The Grace of Kings did end in a satisfying standalone manner, but I can't help but feel that Ken Liu is using The Grace of Kings as a solid foundation for the rest of the series to shine. If my praises for The Grace of Kings are considered as an unpopular opinion, then well, I am happy to sit in the unpopular camp. The Grace of Kings is superbly crafted and I've heard from fans of the series that the Wall of Storms is even better. I will keep my fingers crossed that I am indeed in the presence of a new addition to my favorite series of all time list. So yeah, that's my review for The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. I absolutely love this book even though I struggled a bit in the first half of the novel but I think the payoff was so worth it. The payoff was utterly satisfying. And I am looking forward to reading The Wall of Storms uh, next month. As I mentioned several times on my channel, The Dandelion Dynasty is one of my top priority series to start and finish within this year. And judging from how good The Grace of Kings was already, I am definitely committed to this goal. So yeah, that's it for me today. Please do let me know whether you have read The Grace of Kings or not. If not, do you plan to read The Grace of Kings? I highly, highly recommend this. And yeah, as always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye.